Today's May 10th, 2019, and this is episode 129 of Flame Savers! <laughs> good morning, folks. It is Friday, finally, in uh, good old the Montreal St. Hubert Airport. Uh, it's a day. It's definitely a day. Um, we got a lot of, lot of little things going on today. I'm going to update you guys as we go and just a huge huge thank you uh, to Flight Chops and the amazing video he made yesterday. Uh, there's been over a thousand new subscribers so this is probably a lot of people's first time watching a new episode so thank you for joining us. Hopefully you'll continue to join us on our journey because we only have about three weeks to get this airplane going and as you can see um, even even the, the best projections uh, show us as being crazy. So, yeah, so we're just getting everything going and now uh, let's start to uh, figure out where everybody's doing. So, Jay, what we got here? Charged up batteries ready to install. Norm painted the bottom of these trays yesterday, clean them all up. Bayonets are on the outside. So you were saying yesterday it's you can't really um, mess it up. You can see right up past my finger if there's light there. These spring-loaded receptacles meet up with our bayonets. So if you turned it 180 degrees, they'd be over here and they wouldn't hit anything. Can you best guess how heavy is that battery? It's got to be 60 or 70 pounds. That's when we wish Dusty was still here. <laughs> you do both at the same time. One in each hand. Oh, Jean's here. He's got some gifts. He comes bearing gifts. Hey, Jean, what's, what's happening? <laughs> Sorry to be that late. So I'm bringing some stuff from Europe. From Europe? Yeah. Uh, it was oh. made over here, but this is the stuff from Europe. So you're going <laughs> right. to love it. Right so on. we call it uh, our little Paris then. <laughs> so I'm going to put that on the table. Oh, right? very cool. This is for you guys. Thank you. That looks like a baguette. And some camembert cheese. <laughs> oh, no camembert. Yeah, I might have to modify that. Run into a problem? These rods secure or catch into a hole on the metal part of the battery top. And then we tighten them up down here and it just holds the battery in place so there's no movement around. But the uh, hole in the plate from Mr. Gill at Avial isn't quite big enough for the pin. So we'll uh, check that out. Oh wow. So what we have, we have that pastry from uh, Pascal made in, it, it's made here, but everything is imported from Paris. So you've got the chocolatine over here, almonds and chocolatine, which is a mix of both. And then here, the little parts, they call it chouquette. It's basically a, a little boucher. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, and the it's baguette? On it's on me. Oh, of course. It is a baguette. It's going to change by itself, hair. by itself, like a stone tonight. So we have to eat it, eat it very fast. <laughs> I'll take this one. So I'll grab this one. And now you have to, you owe me a coffee. Uh, someone had braised on the fitting, let's call it, at the end that fits into the battery and just left a fairly large blob of, of braise there. So now, now it fits in and it is nice and secure. So what kind of mechanism holds that up? So this lever assembly runs two pins. Each pin goes forward into a socket below the tray to make sure that the battery tree can't come down and flip. And there's a safety pin? Safety pin here to make sure the latch can't come down and flip. 
Safety, safety, safety. So for the first time in almost 30 years, this thing now has batteries in it, which is a small milestone, but uh, yeah, pretty expensive. They're $1,300 each, that's $2,600 with the batteries. Uh, so the one thing is we gotta make sure we don't leave the master on because we do not want to drain these batteries dead. That's a lot of power. $1,300 worth. <laughs> Good to go. Oh, did I hear something? Sounds like we got a boost pump on or an inverter maybe. Yeah, it's inverter. That brings a lot of gauges to life. We have oil temp. Oil temp's only working right now on the right side. Left side, you can see it's pinned up here, so that either means the cannon plug's undone or we got a short in the system. Both the carb air temps are working. We have outside air temperature working. And our fuel quantities on the right are indicating, and the left, we'll have to do a dip and see because we moved fuel back and forth as we changed um, that sump. Cool. Any of the flight instruments working yet? Um, not until um, Fred fig figures out the rest of that pedostatic. Then... Uh, and nothing on the Gatton side? Uh, Joe doesn't need anything on this side. He just flies by ear. Well, what's the update? Well, actually for a change, today I'm painting. So, doing the right side, no, done the right side yesterday, left side today, nose, and if it dries up, uh, probably do another coat here on the inner side of the, the wing. Cool. So, yeah, it is cool. What's happening here with the flaps? Well, we're just, uh, we're just taking off the corrosion and then making sure all the uh, cotter pins are in and then lubing it up so it uh, can go in there 75 years. It's just surface corrosion, eh? Yeah, that's it. It's just a uh, very light. Actually, it's surprising for sitting out for 28 uh, years. It's very, very light. Uh, just a bit of dust, so we're just cleaning up so it slides well. Cool. Yeah. So Jay, you're on the tail now? On the tail. What have we got not going? Not so tall a tail today. <laughs> well, do you think we can get rudders on today? I think we've got a good chance. You just gotta... Got some cleaning I did in there to get rid of gravel and uh, straw bolts are going in so yeah I'd say by this afternoon we'll, we'll be hanging the rudder hook this rudder post up so it's got some something to sit on there's uh, a bracket we need to be put on yeah two brackets here a set of pulleys and down inside the lower bracket so the rudder post can pivot and we're good to go then how hard would we to do the rigging and stuff after? Um, not that hard. The hardest part will be connecting these small uh, wires to the trim drum. It, it, it's a, you'll see once we get it opened up, the, the cable is wound around and around and around the drum so that when the pilot, say for the elevators, runs the trim wheel back and forth, the pulley back here has probably six or eight wraps of cable around it. So when you take that stuff apart, all the wraps come off and you end up with this. So a matter now of taking that, feeding it back through, putting it around the drum and getting it wound. How do you think this thing's gonna look with the green rudder? Uh, different. <laughs> Be instantly recognizable? Instantly recognizable. With that white red and uh, buffalo rudder. <laughs> Robert, what's happening? Well, I'm shining the tires, trying to get the tires to uh, have a little brilliance on it. So oh yeah, those, uh, and those are brand new tires too. Brand new tires, so they should uh, look pretty good with uh, a little bit of uh, stuff on it. So uh, yeah, and uh, trying to clean around the, the, the airplane and everything. So it's a quiet day today. There's not many people around, so that's good. <laughs> that's good. Cool. Yeah. Oh, we got... How's it all going on the engine here? Going good. Get, get some, get Sir, your first day? Yep, first day. How, how are you liking it so far? I'm loving it. I just might get back into aviation. <laughs> Don't get me going. 
So where did you come in from? I came in from uh, New Jersey. Oh, Fort Plainfield, yep. How long a drive is it? It's only six and a half, seven hours if you fly low. <laughs> so, but I grew up here to just two towns away in St. Brazil. All right, on. So, it's full circle. Cool. Luckily, luckily I got family, so no it, hotels. You know our our, uh, our parts guy uh, Ray from way back. Yes, Ray. I I met Ray working for Connor Fair. He was flying the Connies, mm -hmm. and he actually gave me my first ride in a Connie out of Gander, Newfoundland, sp uh, spraying spruce budworm. Oh, cool. So I'm hoping to see him today. I haven't seen him since '83 uh, or '84. Do you want to go see him while he's coming in right now? Sure, I'm gonna take a walk. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's some time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, How good to see you. Man? He gave me my first ride on a Connie. <laughs> and that was in Gander. That was fun. That was fun that year in Gander. You guys didn't come over to the island with us. You had Michelle with us. No, the uh, no us us wrenches stayed stayed behind. Oh yeah. All, all the uh, all the elite pilots went. Okay. Well, we got into trouble long? coming back because we got some booze and we brought it back. We didn't declare customs with it, so we got in shit for uh, that. Yeah. So, no, it's I don't remember that because he sees the big bottle of cognac I bought. <laughs> so cognac. Turn a few wrenches on that DC3 there. That's what I'm doing. I have a, right now, I'm doing right. lacing in the, uh, in the uh, yeah. accessory compartment. Great, great. Diane okay. Art, I'm trying to remember. It's 30 years. I know. Well, you, you, you don't forget that. Yeah, but you know, 30 years ago, my hands worked a little better. Well, come on, I'll tell you, a lot of my stuff worked a little bit better 30 years well, ago, too. Yeah, well, a lot of the junk don't work. Yeah, so well, you want to go th you tell those stories? No. You wanna okay. <laughs> go fast. <laughs> yeah, but I tell you what, there, you know, the joints and all that, it doesn't oh, yeah. function I'm, like you used to. Yeah, you know, lacing, like, oh man. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be pulling the stunts I was pulling back in those days. <laughs> no, especially with trees and those junk strips in Columbia. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was pretty hot. I, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, it take you two, three days after you come off from a flight like that, you know, get your bum loosened up again, you know. Get the seat out of your ass? Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Sorry. I said pretty well, <laughs> much it. You know, when you start sucking the seat up your ass, you know, it's tight. You don't need seat belts. No, you don't. It's for sure. I don't tell you. Awesome. No, we had a lot of fun. Well, thank you, Ray, again. All right. Uh, how, how, how bad was the traffic? You got... Really bad. But coming back, because I went up the Laurentian Auto Route and all that mm -hmm. was bad. There was a couple of crashes. And when that happens, it just goes nuts. And it was all the way up there. So it took me an hour and a quarter to get up. And uh, not that bad to come down, 50 minutes to come down. I, I, <coughs> stay, I stay here. So I stay here <coughs> in traffic. All right, well, I'll come by and see you guys on Sunday. Awesome, pleasure. Later, okay, see Sunday. you. Right. So it was like seeing Ray again. Wow, it was wild. It was wild. He looked a lot younger. Oh, let's see, 30 something years ago. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's. He's had a hell of a, a heck of a life. Some of the some of the stunts he's pulled. <laughs> so another box, Ronnie. Yeah. I think we got a fire sleeve in here. Uh, some more uh, metal tape for the flight controls. And um, yeah, we'll see. Oh, kerosene. Oh, more, more core seal, more fire sleeve. Holy shit, Mikey! Look at all the, <laughs> look at all the metal tape you got. I think you double ordered. Oh well. So here's the screws we're waiting for, and here, you can take care of the paperwork. Me? What is it? More DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's from Yellow Knight. Oh. <laughs> Maybe get some more caddy shacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's uh, the gauge we need. Where's Pierre? We can install it. Oh, they got the right landing lights this time. Oh, perfect. So we got the gauge for uh, Pierre. Yeah. And new landing lights. There you go. Well, thanks, Benoit. We played out. I think we still got time. I just, uh, if I can get this one cotter pin in, I'm gonna tape the back, and oh. then we're gonna hang it. So we're, Ronnie we're, just we're, gave me trouble. I ordered so much metal tape from maybe all that. I think we got the world supply now. <laughs> <laughs> there. So what you up to? Well, trying to uh, 
thin the line so it's really sharp and uh, straight. So uh, right now I'm doing the white between the black and red and uh, we'll need a second or even third coat so it, it'll be just like the top part. What's, so, uh, what's on the back of your shirt? Back of my shirt. Uh, that's the uh, Montreal Aviation Museum. That's uh, the museum I'm part of. Uh, we're located at uh, saint anne de bellevue on the west end of uh, the, air, the, the island of Montreal. And uh, if uh, people are interested, uh, we have five airplanes on ex exhibit in the, at the museum. So come on down. Including the Norseman. Eh, don't forget the Norseman. Yeah, we're working on the Norseman. <laughs> Oh, smokes has a lot of tools. You brought all the tools? No, I still have about three more cases like that. <laughs> That's why I was asking, what do you want me to do? So I, I don't bring the whole kitchen sink. <laughs> Very good. How was your first day? Good. I love it. Yeah. I might even just uh, think of going back into aviation. Do you think uh, Jay can get that rudder on today? Nah. Trouble. food. Jimmy Barr from the Fort Smith Air Tractor 802 Fire Boss Group dropped off a care package for us. Jimmy Barr's. Mm -hmm.